What up, everybody? It's Valdis Richardson, a.k.a. Brent, and welcome to Brent's Porch. Today's guest is Nakia Banks. Hello. How you doing, Nakia? I'm good. How are you? All right. Nakia does boozy pops. Yeah, those are great. And she also uh, got a website called... Uh, NakiaChanelDesigns.com. That you do. That I do that does... Wow, it's just a little bit of everything. I do stationery... Planners, t-shirts, mugs, just a little bit of everything, decor, if that makes sense. Okay. All types of decor stuff. All right. But before we get to that, she also brought a little gift that I'll show you. Before we get to that, let's talk about some trending topics. My favorite. Uh, what about the Trump hostage uh, takeover? I'm sorry, the Trump shutdown. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, Trump hostage takeover really sounds appropriate because Trump is really showing his immaturity. Because I think that thinking about how many people have been affected by the shutdown and the fact that he really doesn't care and he's doing this all for a wall, like a wall. And even though, you know, you think about it, it in the long run, we know it's not all for just a wall. It's just the idea that you use so adamant to say 800,000 people, I don't care if y'all get paid, I don't care if y'all pay y'all rent, y'all mortgage, y'all call notes, I don't care about none of that, it's about this wall. And then to know that the two parties are never going to agree. Mm-hmm. To know that this could mm-hmm. keep going on for months and months and months, and then this little fake three week reopen, I love it. It's all staged. It's all staged. <laughs> see, all staged. Uh, I look, from what I know, Mexico is paying for the wall, right? It's supposed to be. So what was the shutdown for? If Mexico wasn't paid for it, very true. So why is the American taxpayer wanting to pay for it now? Very true. I don't think that's fair. No, no. And these people missed two paychecks. Two paychecks. That is, that is definitely not cool. So wait. So let me ask this question. So you know that they gave everybody who was getting food stamps their money in January, right? So now that they opened it up for these three weeks, look at how staged this is. Instead of having all of the people, the majority of people who's going to be looking without food, because the majority of people who you think is on EBT is what color? Brown people, right? But but it's not true, right? The population <laughs> is actually that it's more white people born with, that uses food stamps and stuff than black people. But if you give them their money early, in February, you bring them back for three weeks. Think about how you just prevented from having this outpour of white people who are now in these lines. These white people who are standing in these lines. Instead of it being the black people. We didn't think about that because if you give them three weeks, you make them feel like we about everything about to be back in order so that when March rolls around and when the catastrophe hits, when there are actual people out here living like zombies, living like the apocalypse. It won't be it won't be public knowledge because, oh, well, we were open for three weeks and we made everything look like it was good. This whole three-week reopening is staged. Your best friend gets in jail. Y'all couldn't even make an agreement the day before. The day before. The dude just knocked it down. He said, no, nope, we're not doing it. But all of a sudden, your friend gets locked up. The F- FAA said, we're going to stop all these flights. And now all of a sudden, oh, for three weeks, we can, we, we can, we can, Reopen the world is great. How for three weeks? How I do we mean, put a time mean, on? I mean, think about none of that. I mean, think Tell about the that. stage. Yeah. All that stage. It all makes it all makes sense. It all makes sense. All stage. <laughs> it's all stage. It's all stage. I, I can dig it. I can dig it. Yeah. Damn. Hey, look, I didn't even think about. Yep. About Just, how middle America is gonna be out of food oh, where so none of us live. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And then think we're thinking about the DMV and the DMV having this many people. But think about towns that it's all they are is federal government aid workers. Like everybody's affected except for the person who works at the grocery store, the gas station or whatever. Because the town is literally just was just created so that it could be cheaper labor for federal government workers. So like a Huntsville, Alabama, where a lot of federal jobs went. You got a lot of people in those areas who are affected by this, and the only ones not affected is your safe, your your grocery store, your gas station, your Walmart worker, your Target worker. So think about how next month, if they hadn't done something, how it would have looked across the entire United States. Trump ain't stupid, but he dumb. (laughs) He's not stupid, but he dumb. So what do you think is going to happen in three weeks? In three weeks, I think that he's going to shut this shit down again. And this time, it's really going to be indefinite. So I, I, I really hope I that people who are getting their back pay as well as getting whatever they get for this three weeks really figure out how they can hold on to it. And even though I can say that because I'm not affected, I can say that because I'm not affected. No disrespect to anybody. I just hope that there's a way that they can save some of their money and put some to the side.
side and that they're not so far behind. You know what I mean? Cause that's December twenty first to not be getting a check. That's that's a long time. I could I know I couldn't make it. Nah, I would. I'll be up the creek. Yeah, <laughs> two yeah. paychecks. Two, two paychecks. Oh, I'd be. I'd and be imagine done. if it's you and your spouse. Oh, like like my brother, he, him and his wife, he was fiance of TSA. See, so neither one of them got paid for See what I'm you know, saying? for a month. That's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy to even think about. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny to get him in check or yeah. get or get him the hell out. Yeah, one, one yeah, I want them out, but I don't want pence. I will say that I do not want. Pence. <laughs> he's people, worse. He's worse. If people keep saying, "Oh no, no, get pence," no, no, mm -mm. no, pence is worse. Pence no, is worse. No, I don't no. want him at all. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow, that's that, that's insane. That's insane. So, um, how did you feel about surviving R. Kelly? <laughs> I, I'm just, I just, I just, you know. I probably have one of the most unpopular <laughs> female or woman opinion. I'm at this particular point that I feel like everybody needs to be held accountable. Um, and when I say everybody, I'm talking about the teenager, the parent, R. Kelly, his staff, everybody. Because when you think about yourself and you think about how you want to be treated, even when you're 12, when you're 13, you may not be able to make the right sound judgment, but you know how you want to be treated. And I feel like the parents did a disservice. I feel like everybody around this whole entire situation did a disservice and everybody has a hand in how it could have been stopped way sooner. So I feel like while we want to blame R. Kelly and people saying they're surviving R. Kelly, it's actually we're surviving. This is surviving being a human being. Like no adult, no teen, no nobody wants to be peed on, be treated like crap, being told when they can eat. So it's like everybody got to hold a part in it because at what point could you have said, I don't want no parts in this. I don't want to be starving. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be not be able to see my parent. Because I'm like, I think about when I was 13 or I was 14, and if I was somewhere I didn't want to be, I was e I was able to call my parent, and my parent came. Not being able to even call them, you got to make whoever said that you couldn't call them, make, hold them accountable. Everybody needs to be held accountable. And, it's, and, I want it, and that's why I say it's unpopular opinion, because I'm not just saying blame R. Kelly, blame all these adults. I say blame everybody. Everybody holds their weight in it because you can't tell me a 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old does not know when they're feeling like they're being disrespected, when they're feeling like they're being not made valued. So at any point when you feel like you're not being made valued, it's time to e evacuate that situation. And I feel like that 14 year old girl, she, she knew when she was being violated to a point where she was like, all right, this is beyond anything. She could have, something should have been said, and the parents should have been aware. Everybody should have just been, everybody needs to be held accountable. I, th I think the young girls are more, oh, 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 the young girls and adult women, they're more, it's more about fame. And like the, the young girl's like, okay, this is my meal ticket, he's going to help me get famous. Right? So they're easily manipulated. Yeah. But these adults. <laughs> the adults don't get they don't get nothing from me. The I don't adults, get, mm -mm. the adults now like I say I, I don't agree with nobody. I kid touches. I, I don't yeah, fucking don't, kids. I, I don't give right. nobody to touch no fucking kids. I agree. But when you got these adults that stand there that can leave when they choose to, because the homegirl was like no pass from the kids. Homegirl was like, well, and after they went went to the dark room, I thought it was too much, and I packed my stuff and left. Why, why did you even why get did, to that point? Why, why did you been leave if it was somebody you didn't want to be? Yeah. Yeah. So you weren't being held against your will. So what are you surviving? Very true. You stayed there until you was like, okay, there's too much. I'm but leaving. The adults get nothing from me. The adults get no. The adult ladies in this situation get no pass from me because the saddest part is, it's like you had already seen what he had done to a teenager. Like how disrespectful. Like mm, uh, no pass. I don't even want to talk about them. The teens, they get a partial pass because they are teen. They're impressionable. It's fame. It's what you can do. But also after a while, like, these kids that I know today, okay, you say you're going to do something the first time, you don't do it. Okay, you say you're going to do something the second time, you don't do it. Oh, okay. The third time, these kids that I know today, they're like, oh, no, I'm out. Deuces, you you can't do what you say you're going to do. So I'm trying to figure out what could be told to you. If you said that your the, the thing was your career, right? Okay, 14. All right, you just starting out. 15. All right, you you getting it, you're training. By 16, boo boo, you should have had a single out. You ain't got no single. Your mother and your father should have said, oh, you ain't do nothing you said you was going to do. Time to go. Because she should have had a, somebody should have had a single. These kids who say they came to be famous or to be have a career, where are the songs? Mm. Hey, we doing? 
Mm-hmm. Tell me they was back up. Show me somewhere where you could tell me where they were doing something that was advancing their career because why did you stay so long? After two, three months, you could tell them somebody bullshitting you, especially in this music business. Mm. That's true. That's true. And I hear that the adult women were being paid 5K a week to stay with them. So they weren't being held hostage. They were employees. From mm-hmm. what I hear, he was paying them 5K a week to stay in his house. They were working for him. Like I, I, guess, I, I, guess, for them I, I guess being peed on was probably your job description. I don't know. <laughs> That's weird, though. Like, why would you, I just can't imagine what type of fame or what type of, where are we going to be that devalued? To be like, you know what, well, I'm going to take this. Look at the internet. Come yeah. on now. Just look at the internet now. I know, but it's just, that, <laughs> that's the sad part. We're looking at the internet and we're seeing that people bec- be- can become insta-famous. Instead of being like, on the reality, I can make it look like anything. The scenery could be anything. And I could be standing in front of the project. I could be standing in front of anything. That's the sad part. It's like, who are we impressing these days? For real, for real. It's, if we ain't impressing ourselves, it ain't, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless. <sighs> Woo. And y'all heard that yowzers <laughs> self care is so Ooh. important like if you don't start think, thinking about yourself first what's the point of even trying to go out here and have nice cars and have a nice house who are you doing it for nobody's going to be there with you if you're only doing it for the exterior you can't live outside if that's the case no house will have a roof <laughs> shit. shit I mean shit well, that's going to be a little unpopular but well, that's going to be very oh, unpopular well. <laughs> it's going to be very unpopular it's going to be very unpopular but Hey, I'm going to be 40 in four months, May 21st. You old. I'm old, yes. I'm old. I don't, yeah, I'm old. I'm old. I'm too old for these games, too. Okay, well, let me, let me get off of R. Kelly, because you, yes, you, you are digging deep in that. Okay, so tell me about Boozy Pop. I know okay. it's your nice summertime. Yes. Drink. So Pop. my sister is a licensed bartender, and she is a creative, but she was like, kid, I know me and you, if we get together and we decide to do Boozy Pops, this will be something that can really flourish. So how did Boozy Pops start? So I'm reading, I'm on the internet, and Costco comes out with popsicles, alcoholic popsicles. I go online and find out that they're only available on the West Coast, which pisses me off. Costco, if you're listening, it needs to come worldwide. Don't just do it on the West Coast. Make it worldwide. So I see that they're not available. So because my sister is a licensed bartender, and I'm kind of creative when it comes to mixing stuff together, I say, okay, let's get in the lab and let's figure this out for ourselves. So we go on, I go on Amazon, she goes to the lab, we start writing stuff down, and Boozy Pops comes live. A friend of ours does the logo, and boom, summertime we're ready to sell you your Boozy Pops. So that's basically any type of alcoholic beverage you can think of, we can possibly make it freeze. Um, And that's the biggest key, knowing how to make the liquors freeze, knowing what to combine them with. So this year we're going to be doing Boozy Pops summertime, and we're doing a fall edition. So we're going to come out. So this time next year, we will have boozy. It'll still be boozy pops, but it'll be boozy pops warm because we'll have like the spiked apple cider, the spiked hot chocolate, those type of warm beverages that you can have throughout throughout the entire year. So look forward to that. So we'll be back to um, deliver you some boozy pops. We'll you know, have some you, new flavors. You know I like my boozy pops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have some new flavors available. All right. And what else you got? Uh, okay, so, Chanel design. So in the key of Chanel Designs, basically I'm a planner. So I use a actual planner daily to get my life in order. Um, some days it works out, some days it doesn't. But when I'm doing that, I create my own stickers. I do my own stationaries. I'm one of those type of people who love cutesy pins and all those types of things. So I make them myself. Um, like this, I'll show you. One of the gifts that I brought for um, Brent's porch is actually some mugs so that he can try his shops in and i made two versions so this one i don't know if you can see it, it says brent's porch i don't see that you might not be able to see that good there you go there you go brent's porch she made these for me ha <laughs> ha right and then i have two for his wife because she's gonna be on the porch too <laughs> So this is just like different stuff that I do, right? (laughs) Different stuff that I do. um, I do party decorations. So like if you needed banners, those Instagram signs, all those types of things, I do all of those types of things. And that's just like a pastime hobby. I'm always doing something new. I'm always in something, being busy. So I'm going to put these things in use like right now. All right. We'll have us a little bit of Crown Royal Apple. Okay. Okay. (laughs) And I am really feeling the glasses. I'm glad you like them. 
I really like the glasses. I'm yes, like yes, yes, yes. Yep, now, so. now I got my first piece of show prop. Exactly. Bam. <laughs> Bam. You could, Bam. Yep, you could do the whole swivel and everything with the glasses. Yep. <laughs> Bam! I got my first piece. Yep. So, so how how long have you been doing like these uh, planners and and these things? The planner stuff I've been doing since like 2016. I actually taught classes like so you could come and take a class to learn how to plan and get organized. It's re what I do is really called pretty planning. So it's basically where I take my pages and I make them look as pretty as possible so that they can be memorable to memorable to me. That's the only way that you're gonna really figure out how to plan and how to get your life in order is if you make it comfortable and customized to yourself. Okay. So that's pretty much what I do. Okay, well that all makes sense. That makes sense. Oh well, so you have, you have a website with you that you take time to take Yes, that, now right? I have an Etsy shop, but for the most part right now I'm doing custom orders via my Instagram. So if you hit me up on Instagram, you can just DM me and you can do we can do custom orders. So if you wanted to do like banners, pretty much anything that you wanted to do for a party, I could get it done. So you make that shirt you got on or? No, I didn't make this, but but <laughs> I have a design very similar to this that's coming out because me and my husband is about to do t-shirts and bow ties. So be on the lookout. Ah, Business is all around. T-shirts and bow ties. T-shirts and bow ties. Yep. So I'm gonna have to get me some custom t-shirts and bow ties. Yep, yep. That's the goal to get. You know, listen. Everybody wants something funky. We want to look. We want funky. We want our clothes to express who we are. So why not? Why not have your shirt say "fuck you" if that's how you feel? That's how you feeling. If that's how you feeling, say it. <laughs> Live out loud. <laughs> this is good. Uh huh. But I'm glad. And as I say, I, li I like the glasses. I like the glasses. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the glasses. I'm glad you like them. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is really nice. This is really nice. Cool. Well, anyway, that's all the time we have today. You can follow me on Twitter at Brent Porch and on Instagram, Brent underscore Porch. And you can follow Nikita, Nikia, I'm sorry, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> and you can follow Nikia. At Nikia Chanel Designs. And if you want my personal, which you probably don't, at silverlips.com. Silver Lips. And what about the Boozy Pop one? Boozy Pops at Boozy Pops, DC. Y'all hit it? Hit that, hit that subscribe and that like button. And I'll see y'all next week. Deuces. <laughs>